At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Register for free today. Attend Fix Hand and Arm Pain Without Drugs and Surgery on Wednesday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Roselle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Indeed, I am live today. It's a little bit of snow outside and kind of cool and, you know, well, no, it's actually cold. But anyway, welcome to the East Coast in Washington, D.C. and the Mid-Atlantic area. And that's what happens with periodically, right? It's a good thing that some years ago on this very Sunday with the big game, we had uh, a whole lot of snow. It was like 14, 15 inches, but you know, I'd like to forget those things. That's why I moved out of Western New York State and came down here. But we're going to talk about things today that can support you, can add to your longevity, make your life much more qualitative, and you know, things that you need to know about. And that's why we do this program. That's why we do Dr. Tom Rosal Live, and to give you the tools, if you will, to not only live longer, but to live better with the times that you have and the things that you want to do. So what are we talking about? Well, in a general sense, we're talking about blood flow. We're talking about, you know, the blockages, the thickenings, the narrowing, the clotting that can cause all kinds of problems in in, uh, your life. And from uh, a heart attack to angina, which is pain that's distributed from the heart, to strokes, to numbness and tingling and pain throughout your body. And How's a person to know what's, uh, you know, what's the differential? So you go to your doc and you have some blood work done and they put you on all kinds of different types of medications, some of them contributing to what they're trying to stop. And we're going to give you some tools, some keys and but things to look out for. It's really important that you understand what may be taking place in your body. I was preparing for the program today and actually I had something completely different that I wanted to talk to you about, but it's somewhere around five o'clock this morning, 5.30 when I got up, and that's usually when I wandered down to my office at the house, I was starting to read, and I said, oh, you know, why don't we get into this, because I think more people need to know about this, and then we can always do something else a little bit later, but I got online, and I was checking out remedies, if you will, because I'm not, I'm the guy that not only wants to know what's happening, I want to know what the triggering mechanism was, where did it come from, how did it start, when was the very first time, and then apply the process accordingly. You know, in our practice, in my world of 45 years of of, uh, treating people, I ask the question why something takes place to begin with. What are the triggering mechanisms, if you will. Was it neurogenic because there was some injury to the hard components, the structural components of the body? Was it bioelectrical, biochemical? Is it anything that's outside our body, the things that we put in our system that we really shouldn't be doing? You know, a lot of you are going to be doing that, you know, later on today, but please be careful. We'll talk to you about why behind the scenes in a few minutes. And the electrical fields that are out there. We live in the Washington metropolitan area. And those of you who live in cities throughout the country know that you have things that are coming into you from the outside. At least you should. And if you're ignoring them, it's not so hot, right? And then we can we can break it down into subcomponents. We talk about we can talk about all the vaxes and the boosters and things that we put into our body. They have an effect because they affect different tissues. We we've heard the term uh, cytokine cascade, cardiolipid layers, and so forth. And those are real deal things that get triggered that can cause problems. But the other piece is the stress pattern, the emotional platform, the decision-making processes that we all go through and what that's all about. 
So having said that, let's get into this a little bit because I'm going to walk you through why there are so many different conditions that show up as a result of your blood getting not even so not even too thick, but placking. See, when you have injury, an injury can come to your blood vessels and your heart and all the distribution platforms from a lot of different methods. But at the end of the day, if you understand what's happening, you can actually do something to fix it. It actually goes into a, a damage pattern and then a repair cycle and a damage pattern and a repair cycle. And all that has to do with inflammatory reactions, inflammation. Remember, if you've listened to the program, over a long period of time, you're going to hear me say, when you hear the word inflammation, think acid. And when you hear body acidity, if you do your pH, your acid-base balance, and it's too acidic, you know you have inflammatory reaction. Most medical scientists today understand that there's very few things out there that are endocrine related, meaning the organ systems and tissues and so forth, that do not stem from a bad inflammatory process that's out of control or a subtle one slowly over a period of time that just kind of eats at your system. And we have these clots that take place. So infections can cause these things that we're talking about. Uh, the exposure to heavy metal formation, dietary patterns, stress-related uh, areas, smoking, or being around people who smoke all the time. I grew up uh, with two parents who were hairdressers, and they had a very large salon. And back in the day, uh, everybody that walked into a beauty salon and barbershop, they all smoked. And But think about the beauty salon, particularly ladies and guys. We all go into them today, right? There are tremendous amount of odors and chemicals and fumes that are there. So when you roll back the clock and you think about many of us who were exposed to that, maybe when we were younger and we walked in with our parents, uh, all that cigarette smoke. If we were in a car and our parents smoked, but you're not going to smoke, you're too young to smoke. We were actually smoking. And so the, the process of destruction, repair, repetitive cycles continued on an ongoing basis, no matter what it was or who we were. So what we want to do is we want to understand that. We want to understand that things like high blood pressure can lead to cardiovascular disease, and high blood pressure can come along for a lot of different reasons, and we'll touch on that. Uh, actually, we could spend the whole program just talking about those things. Um, you know, back in the day when I was in school, the the different laboratory levels uh, were very different than that they are today. What I'm talking about are things that measured uh, blood fats, lipids. and But what they failed to do then, although they were suspicious that it existed and they totally failed to do it now, is measure the inflammatory reaction that exists within our body that causes a lot of this placking, this breakdown, this irritation, and so forth. You know, first there was a lot of finger pointing and said that the reason that people had heart disease and, and suffered so many heart attacks and strokes and so forth was simply because they ate too many uh, trans fats and saturated fats and so forth. Well, if you look at Italy and you look at France and you look at uh, uh, Greece and some of the other countries where there are heart attack levels, particularly in France, their heart attack levels and their stroke levels are far lower. When you look at saturated fats, they score very, very high. So what's the difference? What's going on in those countries that don't allow them to have the bandwidth of cardiovascular and, and coronary disease that other countries do? So we're going to get into that a little bit and try to really bring a little understanding to it. I want to make sure that if I, my 13, 14 year old grandson was sitting here and a super smart kid could understand it. Well, if I can explain to him, I can understand it. And then if I can understand it, maybe I can get you to really understand that you have an opportunity to turn things around. In the second part of the program, what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the fix, what you can do to make a difference. So you might present with a lot of different symptoms, right? My uh, head hurts. I wake up with a headache all the time. But you've been to, you know, your traditional doc, you've been to chiropractors, you've been to acupuncturists, but your head still hurts. And nobody's taking the time to find out what that inflammatory cycle is that may be causing that. If you wake up with a headache in the morning, it could be thyroid. 
It also could be cardiovascular. You're out walking around, and all of a sudden, your legs start cramping up, and your butt starts uh, cramping up as well. What's that all about? Well, it can be not enough magnesium. It could be that you didn't get enough B12 in your system and folic, uh, folate, folic acid. Uh, or it could also be that you're placking, that the clotting that is going on in your system is narrowing the flow, if you will, to the target, means your legs and your butt muscles that allow you to walk. Guys, if you're suffering from ED, you know, all these ads out there coming in the clinic and on the first visit, well, they're using a percussive unit that increases the blood supply, the blood flow to the scrotum and to the penis. That's as a result of placking that's taking place over a period of time. When we know that, uh, you know, a blood clot that begins to form, you know, will cause, you know, things to shut down, but also things to become worse in many different areas, it should get all of our attention and that we really need to take a look at what's happening. You know, the 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 uh, blood work that we go and that we traditionally have done is uh, is insufficient, really, to let us know whether or not we have any kind of uh, placking going on or loss of blood flow. Uh, they just don't do that. They say, well, your cholesterol is you know, too high. We've got to drop it down under 200. Well, not so much because cholesterol is important for brain function. It's important for hormone function. It's, uh, it's important for neurological transmission. There's a lot of reasons we don't want to do that. And if we drop it down, we may have a problem. Your LDL or your low density lipotropic factors are the ones that are supposed to be the bad guys, right? Well, maybe, but there's good bad guys and there's, or I should say, not so bad bad guys and there's really bad bad guys. Which ones are which? You don't get that till you see all the subfractions and you have to put it together with lifestyle. Your high density factors, that HDL area, those are the guys that are supposed to protect you. Well, they're really protective ones and there's not so protective ones. So you have to make sure that you know what's happening. But to really understand if there's placking going on, you have to do things like angiograms and you have to do things like ultrasounds and you have to uh, do chest x-rays and things of that nature and measure blood flow uh, along the way. It's critical that we understand, you know, what causes things to occur. Have you ever picked up a fish, even a goldfish in, in uh, you know, your little uh, home pool, you know, so to speak, right? Well, they're slippery, right? You can't grab them. They kind of go away real fast. Uh, the reason for that, they have something uh, that covers them is called glycolax or glycocalyx. And we have that too in our bloodstreams. But that's a thing that allows them to be very slippery and it allows your arteries and your your cardiovascular system to be slippery as well so you don't have anything stick to it. So damage can occur if that's not there and the damage occurs because that covering, that slipperiness uh, begins to go away. So you end up with these clotting. Blood clots just keep on growing. Unfortunately, if you don't do something to resolve the problem or change the reason if you will, that things are occurring. And we're going to give you some tools if you, and be able to turn that around and be able to fix this. So what we're going to talk about today is cardiovascular uh, placking. We're going to talk about what happens when you ignore it. It's called death sometimes. It's called inability to function sometimes. So we want to make sure that you have all the tools to make a huge difference relative to your longevity and your morbidity. We're coming up to a break pretty quickly. We're here at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. I want to give you some tools today. I want to be able to give you the opportunity to not only live longer, but to live better while you're here. We'll touch a little bit about uh, the ACE receptors in COVID and so forth, and why the inflammatory levels can get so high. And also, can you do something about that? And we'll touch upon that in the second part of the program. But it's really important that you get it. It's really important that you understand it. We're coming up to a break. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. I'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live on this 
very cold Sunday, but it'll be warmer later on when we watch the game this evening and see who's going to come out on top. I know I'm going to be sitting in front of that tube with my family and see what uh, the end of the day looks like, right? Well, I hope you enjoy it. And those of you who don't like that, there's some really good movies on. I already checked because in case I get sabotaged because I'm going to pre-record anything. Having said that, we're talking about blood flow. We're talking about things that go placking in your body and cause you all kinds of problems. We said, you know, that you're exposed to the micro particles of different types of things, everything from heavy metals to smoke to stress patterns to the inflammatory reactions that are caused by certain types of foods. You combine all those together and you've got problems, particularly if you're diabetic. Things are going to get worse. And we're going to take you through that. We're going to talk about the neuropathic problems that come about. And what I mean by that is, you know, the numbness and the tingling. A lot of that can simply be a result of not enough blood supply for many reasons. And we'll touch upon that as we go through. We're here at 888 Give me a call. Love to talk to you on this or anything else. But before we do, let's go to the phones because we have people popping up already. Bill, how can I help you, sir? Thank you for calling. Yes. Good afternoon, doctor. How are you? I am well, my friend. What's going on? What can I do for you? Well, I've been getting up more often at night, like ah. every couple of hours. And okay. it's been, you know, I can't sleep very well. When did, when did that start? Uh, I would say a year ago. Okay. How old are you, Bill? I'm in my 60s, 67. Okay. Okay, so let me walk you through some of the triggering mechanisms that can cause that. And so when you have that urgency, uh, let me ask you this question too. When you get up at night and you, and you go, um, is it co a complete urinary stream or is it just a little bit and you have the pressure that makes you get up? It's the pressure that makes me get up and I don't empty it. Okay. So it's not. It's, it's not a full flow when, when you do go to the bathroom? No, it's not. It's, it okay. is during the day. During the day, there's no problem at all. Okay, uh, so night, it, no. can be, it can be one of a couple things. You're, you're either, uh, when you lie flat on your back, the position of the bladder is being irritated because of the nerves from your low back are not firing properly. So um, sometimes we see, as we get older, the, the, the space between the last couple vertebrae in the low back will narrow, so the nerves are being more restricted and more compressed, and then that can cause a problem. Uh, over a period of time, uh, we notice that the dietary patterns that people get themselves into, particularly if they're exposed to smoke uh, or they're smokers themselves, whether it's cigarettes or cigars or pipes or anything of that nature, that can cause an issue as well. Uh, people who are on certain types of medications will uh, also uh, notice that they may have problems. And, and the side effects of these things, uh, particularly things that will uh, cause part of the problem we're talking about today with, with blood clotting. There's many medications that do that. However, one of the things that is overlooked, in my opinion, by so many physicians is nitric oxide uh, levels in the body, which increases blood supply and vasodilation. The prostate is going to be very susceptible to that. And the other is zinc. About 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I wrote a paper called Zinc and the Prostate Gland. And it was based on information that came out of the World Health Organization. Uh, and the study area, the cohort study, was men in the Middle East. And what they found the conclusion of the study was simply this, is that the uh, zinc deficiency will cause swelling of the prostate. And what they found is that the dry weight of the prostate on autopsy of, of uh, older men, that the dry weight was 50% zinc. So as zinc levels begin to decline and diminish, not only do people's health uh, begin to be more susceptible to all kinds of things and viral patterns as we know zinc is one of the things that can make you much stronger with that but it also causes swelling uh, of the of the prostate gland things that we eat that we're allergic to over time they take a toll so there's many things that can be done so when a patient comes in we're going to check their zinc levels always you know based on their symptom process we're going to take a look at 
uh, their dietary patterns. We're going to look to see if the, the nerves from the structural system, the low back, are working the way they're supposed to. Uh, and we want to decrease the inflammatory, uh, inflammatory response. There's a lot that can be done to make a difference. Bill, if we can help you, please reach out. Uh, and thank you for sharing that with us. I uh, Pay attention to the rest of the program. We'll touch on We're coming up to a break. Uh, this is a very important subject that we're talking about, your cardiovascular and your blood supply. Don't go away. We'll be right back after some important messages. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live, and we're talking about things that are very important to you today. What we're talking about is your blood flow and how it affects so many different places within your body. Uh, we negate to really understand the process. And, you know, then we do damage control. We go to our doctor and they put us on statins and they try to put us on blood thinners and where so much of this is reversible all by itself. So we want to talk about what really causes the damage, what causes problem. We talked a little bit about, you know, erectile dysfunction and our last uh, caller was talking about an enlarged prostate that causes him to have uh, urinary frequency at nighttime. Uh, all these things have similar situations. They're called swelling, inflammation, inflammatory reaction, and left untreated or unacknowledged over a period of time can cause a lot of damage because if your body's not getting the arterial flow or the blood supply, not only is your heart and your brain going to be a problem, uh, obviously things like, you know, they, they call it senile dementia. That means as we get older, we lose our ability to uh, to think things through. That's blood supply problem in so many cases. But the other pieces like the peripheral neuropathies, the pain in our legs and our feet, and you get uh, peripheral neuropathy in your hands, by the way, uh, and we forget you know, to, to mention that. And also, our eyes are very susceptible to blood flow, and kidneys are as well, and the transport of any kind of nutrient within our bodies. So we're looking at things that can cause problems. You know, we're, we said blood pressure, but that doesn't answer the question why the blood pressure problem is there. Heavy metal exposures, if you've had any kind of vaccine in your life, you've had stabilizers in it. It's called thimerosal, which is mercury, but also aluminum. How many of you cook with aluminum? You put it around your food, you shove it in the oven, or you put it wherever, and then you eat because that aluminum, those aluminum uh, ions are getting into your food and you're getting them into your body not necessarily the best thing that you've been doing. Or you cook in plastics. You put things in a microwave that are plastic-like, and you're getting that. Those also can do a tremendous amount of damage to the system. So we could go on and on. And you know, then we look at things that have uh, kind of they, – they cause other elements to, to be deficient. How many of you are on – uh, things like some, like a protein pump inhibitor, right? That's you, because you're suffering from GERD. My friends, that's easily fixable, but what's happening is you're depleting your body of tremendous amount of mineralization, including magnesium and B12 and folate, and the, the, the list is, is quite large. So we have to make sure that we understand what the problem is, then to put the fix to it. We're going to get into it much more in depth in just a couple minutes, but I'd like to go to the phones first. Hope, thank you for holding. How can I help you? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Yes, hi. Hi. Well, I'm, I'm concerned about shortness of breath. Okay. All of a, well, I can't say all of a sudden because it's been going on for about a month, but I started kind of going back to bed and taking naps and things, and I haven't been sleeping that great through the night. So Let me I ask you. Have, okay, let me ask you a couple quick questions. So, um, one, did you have the uh, – did you have the uh, – uh, the COVID vaccine? No, I've never had a vaccine in my adult life that I can ever remember. No. Okay, good. Okay, good. How old are you? 83. Okay, when's the last time that you've had any kind of blood work done? Um, I guess about two months ago. Okay, do you remember what your white blood cell count was? Was it normal? Was it higher or was it low? 5,000, five on the, the scale is what's considered normal. They've lowered the, the, the ranges way down, but do you remember what yours was? No, I, I remember what my A1C was, but I don't remember what. What, what was that? Um, 5.6. Okay, so you're still okay. Wait. 
Uh, 6.5. 6.5. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't have my records in front of me. Okay. If, if you're 6. at 6. Point, if, you're at, if you truly are at 6.5, uh, you're diabetic. And you have yes, to make sure... Too. Yeah, you have to make sure that that's treated properly, and it can be treated very, very well. And that may be the cause of your um, of your shortness of breath all by itself. So what happens is the blood sugar levels will congeal as well if they stay in the blood, and they can cause uh, placking both in the peripheral areas in your in your legs. It can cause problems in your eyesight. It can cause problems in your kidneys and so forth. Um, anybody who's diabetic generally has a zinc uh, problem that meaning that there's not enough in their system as well as other things, but just that much information tells me that may be contributing uh, to the problem that you're having, and it'll affect the arterial flow in your system, your legs, uh, leading to peripheral neuropathy. Um, so that's where we would start. That's what, what you have to begin to address and, and address it well. Uh, you know, and I'm, at this point, what I would say to you is you know take a really good hard look at your dietary patterns and you're one that you really have to get rid of any of the refined foods uh, you have to dramatically increase your vegetable intake increase your water consumption get away from anything that you know that you have uh, in your diet that is sweet uh, does that mean total elimination i don't know your history so uh, you can be helped with that but uh, the fact that your voice is strong, so your energy is good. Uh, there's a lot that can be changed, but you don't want let you don't want that to sit there. And if you're taking medications uh, for your diabetes, um, those will add to what we're talking about. They will they have those side effects. Uh, our nutrition department would be happy to help you. Uh, you can give them a call, and you know they can walk you through it and see what uh, what can be done. But we really need to look at all of your blood work and see what your your lipids look like, um, and and measure those as ratios to other things. Take a look how it's affecting your transport of your uh, your blood, your red blood cells, and the size of them, and the deficiencies that they may or may not have, but it's something that can be done. Like I said, what's encouraging, just listen to you, obviously I can't see you, but what's encouraging is your voice is strong. If we can help you, give us a call, and we're more than happy to do more for you. You know, when I hear people, and I talk to them on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, they sound as uh, as good as Hope does over the phone. Obviously, I've never met her, and I don't know her entire entire medical history. But you know, she's she's someone that I think that can be uh, made a whole lot better, as most of us can be. My uh, whole platform, my whole thought process, relative to myself or anybody else, is that as long as you're breathing, your cells are continually exchanging, and you want to support the good guys. And you want to get rid of the senolicin cells, the old cells, the damaged cells, the ones that you know, your body is uh, being subject to. So uh, we all can move forward. But we're talking about cardiovascular disease. We're talking about uh, blood flow to different types of the body. We're talking about the restriction that takes place because of so much of our lifestyle is not supported the way it is. You know, going back to what we were talking about in France, why does a country like that that eats so many saturated foods and, you know, they smoke. They don't smoke as much as the Italians do. They don't smoke as much as other people do. But why do they feel better? Well, a lot of it is, is they're talking about maybe it's the, the dry red wine that they have. Maybe it's the lifestyle where they sit and they actually enjoy each other so their stress levels aren't up. So they, uh, you know, don't produce the inflammatory response within the body. You know, I, I mentioned earlier on that a lot of erectile dysfunction problems for guys and for women, by the way, you know, you suffer the same thing, but just differently, uh, can lead to or be caused by blood supply problems. And, you know, there was there was an interesting article that I read on top of that. You know, we look at patients who have been on, uh, you know, heavy dosages of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. They're called NSAIDs, such as you know, things like ibuprofen and aspirins and Advil and naproxen and, you know, Celebrex back in the day and things of that nature. Um, they effectively decrease the inflammatory response, but over a long period of time, the platelets that cause clotting in the body can begin stacking pretty heavily. 
And what happens is that you end up with a loss of blood supply to certain areas. Yep, it works. It decreases the inflammation, so the pain pattern is better. But over time, it actually gets progressively worse. Uh, there's things that we don't look at closely enough, in my opinion, and it's called nitric oxide formers. And what these things do is that they help dilate your blood vessels. That's what all the, the Cialis and, you know, uh, the Viagra's are based on. They're heavy duty pharmaceutical grade nitric oxide stimulators within the body. Well, there's natural things that can, uh, can be used as well. Uh, we want to make sure that we have those things in our diet, good B complexes, particularly niacin, by the way, and in time release niacin will, is known to decrease the, uh, the clotting factors that are produced by uh, fats within our system. Magnesium, certain types of magnesiums are very, very useful and have been shown clinically to make a difference. Vitamin E, but certain types, the succinate form of vitamin E is useful. And it goes on, your fatty acids. I read an article the other day that got my attention because several patients had been bringing it up and they said that too much fish oil, omega fatty acids, can cause problems with uh, within the body. And... You know, that's, uh, you go back to guys like Dr. Mark Hy uh, Hyman, who is the director of integrative medicine at Cleveland Clinic, and that flies in the face of many researchers over the years. So my question, and many of you have seen that study, my question is this, what type of product did they use on these cohort studies? Did they supply them and they were less qualitative? Uh, they all admit that we all need those omega fatty acids at high enough levels, but they say in excess of a thousand milligrams a day of the vitamin or the fish oil, and particularly the omega-3, can cause some side effects. Well, I'm not convinced, uh, simply because I don't know how this study was run, and I've got to look into it much more in depth. And as I find out, obviously, my directive is to help you as much as you can. But we want to get natural nitric oxide formers in our body to help uh, open up the blood vessels, if you will, increase the vasodilation, increase the mitochondria, which gives you your energy. The lady that we just talked to, she has uh, definitely some uh, vasoconstriction, and uh, there's a lot that she can do to make a difference with that. We want to avoid things like uh, the different types of seed oils, you know, whether they're cold pressed or otherwise, uh, they're a primary source of what's it called an omega-6 fat. And these guys uh, can cause chronic problems like uh, bringing up your blood pressure and uh, causing your insulin not to be transported properly. So people get too fat because of it because they can't, uh, you know, get that stuff to metabolize properly. But the, but the, uh, uh, the activity of something like linseed uh, oil, uh, they get embedded into the cells and they cause the tissue to begin to destroy itself, to begin to break down. It's called oxidative stress. And they can remain there for years. And you know, some uh, scientists have said they've, they've tracked it in up to seven years. Now, I have never read those studies, so I'm just reporting to you conclusions of um, you know, some of the things that we read in PubMed. Uh, but there are things that can help and reverse that. You know, you want to get that insulin level way down. We do a test called Adrenal Stress Index that measures your cortisol. The higher your cortisol, the less sensitive you are going to be uh, able to transport all kinds of things into the cellular structure, regardless of what it is. Uh, we want to look at the refined carbohydrates. We want to look at GMO modified foods. And the, the list actually goes on. Is your blood pressure too high? Is it being treated properly? Or are there side effects, if you will, to the medications that you're taking to lower your blood pressure, which there always are. So we want to look at these these things that cause abnormal clotting. We want to talk about the the inflammatory cohorts that are out there, the things that just you know, trigger um, our body's inability to transport into cellular tissue, and then it goes on and on and on. And but each person is not a one size fit all, they're individual. Your histories are different. Your, uh, your susceptibilities based on your genetic map are different than somebody else's. And when you go after these things properly, 
if you will, if you make a difference uh, in your own individual world, you can turn things around. One thing is our first caller talked about an enlarged prostate. Uh, the first thing I would go with him is to find out what his zinc levels are based on history. Then I would look at omega fatty acids. Then I would look at anything that he's allergic to causing an inflammatory response. But you know, even before that, I'm gonna look at his nervous system. I'm gonna look at the nerves that go to that area. The L5 disc, which is the last disc in the spine, houses a nerve called the lumbar, uh, or excuse me, the S1, the sacral one nerve root. And that goes to the scrotum. So, and it goes to the prostate. And so if that nerve is being inhibited in some way, it's not gonna work. That also goes with every arterial bed in your body. They all have nerves. There was a, a physician going back two years ago that uh, I got a little crossways with, and he was not a bad man. He was actually knew his business. He was an electrocardiologist. And he, you know, we were talking about the, uh, if the, well, the influence of the vagus nerve, which is one of the, the nerves from your brain on the heart. Well, the vagus nerve isn't just one nerve. The vagus nerve has a ventral branch, an anterior branch, and it's the one that uh, goes to a lot of different organ systems and it controls the automatic functions. Well, that nerve goes to the uh, sinoatrial nodes of the heart and it controls the rhythm of the heart. And many people who have atrial fibrillation have a problem with that nerve being irritated because they've been in a car accident, gentle one, maybe 10, 15, 20 miles an hour, their head was snapped back, they didn't feel a whole lot, but all of a sudden they came out with a little fluttering. They came out with a, a, a little misfiring of that nerve. And I told this physician, I said, you know, uh, this is what happens and we see it often. He says, well, it's in the textbooks, but we don't see it that often. I said to him and suggested that maybe they need to evaluate it neurologically because in our practice, when we deal with patients who have uh, cardiac misfiring or they have atrial fib and so forth, it's one of the things that must be checked immediately. Otherwise, you're gonna miss what's really going on. And it could be, you know, instead of putting the patient on toparol and then having to go ablations and the steps that they take after that, or even, you know, unfortunately, many people putting on pacemakers, Sometimes just fixing the nervous system can fix that cardiovascular fib. And so why is that important based on what we're talking about? Well, it's because, you know, what's happening uh, is a finger pointing contest, right? Uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg? The clotting may uh, be due to something very different than the misfiring of the heart, although the pooling mechanism of the heart can cause an issue. Uh, but in this situation, if you can fix it, you can save them from all the different types of medications. We're coming up for a break. Um, I'm going to give you a couple more pieces that you can really stack together and make a huge difference. We have an, another call waiting for us. I will take that call when I come back. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. I'll be right back. News Talk 105.9. WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live, as you do every Sunday at high noon even though this is the Sunday that we all gather around and nobody leaves the room because we're watching the big game, right? Well, I'll be there with everybody else. <laughs> and you'll probably be able to pry me away, but it's because it's not my favorite teams are playing, but it's going to be an excellent game. Anyway, nevertheless, you know, we, we do this program simply because that we care that you get the right information always. And an ongoing basis, whether it's our podcast or this, you can always... Get a hold of me if you'd like, uh, simply by going to drtomrosvell.com. Uh, and by the way, you scroll down. We have a lot of vendors who bring you this program. Check them out. Support them. See what they offer you. And, you know, if you want my opinion on anything, just send me a note. But if you do send me a note, be assured that I will get back to you. I promise you that. We have one more call that I want to take and not be standoffish. Peter. Thank you for calling. How can I help you? Good morning, Dr. Rozelle, a regular listener. How are you doing? I'm doing great, my friend. How's it going with you? What's happening? Well, I have a question for you that I've been unable to get an answer to. Whenever there is a barometric change, I seem to get lightheaded, and it's, uh, you know, it's sort of a downer. 
I don't function as well as I usually do. When did that start for you? Oh, my gosh. I think it's been going on for 12, 15 years. Was there anything that took place prior to that, any kind of injury? I did have a heart attack 20 years ago. Okay. So depends on the blood supply that's uh, uh, been impaired. Uh, generally, if you have a heart attack, it's also going to infect other blood vessels in your body. It could affect your head. It could affect uh, different organ systems and so forth. Then you can end up with a little dizziness and vertigo and imbalances, even, you know, headaches. And headaches could be very mild or it could be just a dull, uh, like you still got a hangover type of headache. Um, but those, you know, the triggers are that type of shift, that kind of barometric change. And it, they can come from a lot of things. They can come from injury. They can come from a heart attack. Uh, because the blood supply, or what they call the col collateral circulation, isn't as good as it used to be. So here's what happens. There's two things that you may notice. One is that your, your uh, dizziness or that headache or that not feeling good feeling can change with weather because of the pressure shift and changes that you get. But also if you change your posture position. So for example, if you're sitting and then suddenly you lie down too quickly, uh, that can produce a headache and head pressure. If you go from a lying position to a standing position, that often will produce a headache if the chemistry in your body, particularly your fight-flight system, isn't working the way it's supposed to, and you can have uh, vertigo in those uh, those situations. But uh, the the basic pattern that you're describing, the uh, the influence that is there, uh, can be very traumatic uh, in its origin, uh, but it tells me that that what may be taking place is something that might could be far more simple. It could be your fight flight system, your adrenal system, not giving you the support that it needs. It produces a hormone called angiotensin. Angio meaning blood vessel. Tension is tone, and that thing kicks in and out and regulates based on. Uh, differentials in, in pressure. Uh, the one posturally, if you're lying on your back and you stand up too quickly, it feels like you're going to uh, sometimes get really dizzy and some people in severe situations feel like they're going to pass out. Um, that can be as a result of the heart attack you had a long time ago. It just knocked your system out and your body's never truly repaired. Can it be repaired? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it also can be from you know the other pieces that we touched upon. There's a lot of little things. My brain says there's something that is there that if we can find the trigger to it and treat what's really causing it, uh, you can turn this thing around. But I would first go to neurological pathways with you, and the next thing I would go to would be uh, the biochemical system that's affecting you know the heart and so forth. I hope that's useful. Uh, it's you know, it's it's not one thing that I would uh, not go after. I would look at it very carefully. We've had patients with those types of conditions over the year, and they're multidimensional. There's just not one little thing. But to put up with it all of this time, and particularly when you have, you can finger point, meaning I had a heart attack. Now, over the years, this has been the sequela. This has been the consequence uh, since then. Maybe it was your heart. Maybe it was the stress related to your fight flight system, your adrenal system. You know, maybe uh, when that happened, uh, there were some neurological pathways that were altered. Or it could simply be that it you're not supplying the right nutrient base and you're taking medications and so forth that uh, can be uh, adding to it. So if we can be of help to you, uh, please reach out. This is something that, uh, you know, if I was in your position, I want to find out what the deal is and, you know, what can be done outside the medical arena. You know, we talk about so many different things, and they're so important as we try to optimize our health and making sure that, you know, that we have uh, not only the longevity on the planet, but we have the uh, the fun that's that we really would like to have with the amount of years that we wish that we had more of. And, you know, if you live to be 120 and you feel like garbage the entire time, is it really worth it? 
my brain goes, let's make sure that you have the energy. Let's make sure that you have the neurological integrity. Let's do what we can to shift and turn things around. So if you live to be 95, you've enjoyed every moment of every day that you're on the planet. You know, we see people around us limping around and, you know, we've been under a stress pattern for the last couple of years, far more than we ever thought possible. And it's still there. It hasn't changed. It hasn't gone away. So that emotional side is there. Many of us have, you know, had vaccines and we've had booster shots and so forth. And, you know, the, the end product is that we know that there are uh, problems with heart, myocarditis and pericarditis. Uh, we know that there are other immunological responses that have taken place. And a lot of that information is coming out. You do your own research. I'm just reporting to you what I know is to be true. But at the end of the day, we have to be responsible for our own health. At the end of the day, we have to make sure that we get the tools. So we know with this and we want to pro prevent placking, it's real simple. It's real straightforward. Change your diet. Go for a walk. And, you know, start adding things like magnesium and drink a lot of green tea and add a little vitamin E and add a good uh, B complex. And guess what? Life has a tendency of turning around. We're coming up to that place in the program where we're going to have to say I'll see you next week. You know, just remember, I do this program ongoing for one reason and one reason only. It's very simple. It's because I love you all. See you next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com.